But I want to take a look at uh, CAT here for some of our pre-market analysis, and we'll just look at this. Uh, let's look at some higher time frame perspective. So traders, I'm on a weekly bar right here. We'll tighten this up. And again, I strongly, with a capital S, underlined, encourage you, capital E underlined, to go back in and in your free time, just look at charts and look at the relevance of market structure. Over and over and over, I say throughout the course in the live rooms, look left. Why? Structure leaves clues. Why? Because it is truth. Price is truth. Again, quit worrying about why something happened in the market. Don't fret. Just look left and say, okay, this market found a symmetrical double top right there. And when we take a look at this market in 2007, again, I have no idea what I was thinking in the markets right here. What I do know, however, is that when Walmart rallied, or Cat Caterpillar rallied to $85, this massive weekly bar also showed me an incredible overbought condition using the basic technical indicator. I think it's the second most widely used. We're overbought. So when we hit that overbought condition, what's the first thing that I do? My mind is pre-programmed to say, look left. Why? Because structure leaves clues. And when I look left, I'm saying, is there any relevant market structure to the left? Survey says, yes. Massive structure resistance. The last time this market traded at this price, what happened next? Straight south, $15. Outside return, lower high. This lower high is 618% of the previous swing. Fibonacci retracement, swing high, down to this new structure low. Bada bing, bada beautiful. Right to the 618.786. Then the market made a retest of the previous lows right here, followed by a new structure low. This ring high right here came in at 618 of the previous move right here. And then we walked down to the $58 handle. Guess what 58 had been previously? Structure support. Look left, previous resistance in October of 06. Once broken, we came back down in October of 07. One year later, the market has a memory. That's just incredible. It's amazing. No, it's not. It's a bunch of other traders after this big massive sell-off bar saying, hey, previous resistance, once broken, anticipated support. And we put in a symmetrical double bottom right here. Six bars up, six bars back down. Okay, so what did we put in here? A symmetrical double top with bearish divergence. We rolled back over. So we had a sideways trade with a market contained by an $85 high to a $60 low, a $25 trading range that were easy pickings. Now, would I have been short right here? No, not have been. Why? Because this was a new structure high in price. I would have been telling you to buy calls all day right here, buy the stock, get long Caterpillar. And then right here, I would have said aggressive first test because this is the left side there's the right side. There's the double top. And then if we took price down to a daily bar at these levels, I promise you there's a symmetrical double top right there, overbought bearish divergence. Once we break through structure support, as the market rallies back to it, what do we anticipate? Resistance. So we double top here at 60 bucks. Again, we get a $10 move. So this is a 2 ATR pullback before we break above it. The market goes to a new structure high right here, followed by the anticipated higher low. Where might that higher low exist? Look left. Previous resistance, anticipated support. It's also a 618 Fibonacci retracement of the swing low that preceded the drive to that new structure high. Over and over and over. Now the market rallies. Look left. I'm overbought. If I sell it right here, this is aggressive. Or I can wait for the double top. We didn't get the double top. So the aggressive trader that sold right here, we put out half of our position and were stopped out. The conservative trader that waits for the double top right here never got the signal. Repetition's the mother of skill. Look left. Structure leaves clues. So Caterpillar just took out a swing high. Let's go take a look at some of the...
primaries. SPY, the spiders. Low to low trend line extension. Low to low to low. No closes below. We're going to come down and test it. DIA. Let's look at the diamonds. Still holding. Low to low trend line holding. QQQs. Here to here to here. More accelerated right here. Two weekly closes below on the NASDAQ. This is a massive bull channel. The high to high trend line extended right here contains all the rallies. Previously, the low to low to low third test is confirmation contained the pullbacks. 3 to 5% pullback right here, buy them. Market rallies right here, pullback, rally, pullback. This guy was the test. Here's the lower close. We made a slightly lower low. Now you can see right here, we made a rally intra-week, pulled back down. High probability we get a lower low, lower close for one, two, three, four, five consecutive weekly lower closes. Four of those weeks gave us an intra-week lower low as well. Okay. IWM. Low to low trend line extension. All right, now let's come down and let's go lower time frame. S&P 500, 60-minute chart, relevant market structure. Look left. Look at the DSR levels. Just nail these swing points right here. Again, never a question of if we're going to break out, just when and what direction will we head. So grab your ruler right here. And again, it's the what-if scenario. I'm looking to sell or buy the retest of the level, the retest. Okay, so right here is a retest. We come back down to this swing low. It's a 19-point move in the S&P. There we put in a double bottom. It's a retest. Buy them. Another 20-point move right there. I buy them again right here. Again, there's a retest. Cover at the previous swing. There's 60 points, S&P. Buy them again right here. Now on this one, we have a move against us, an adverse excursion of nine points. Remember, two ATR, the average true range on the hourly is around seven points right now. So two ATR be 14. We did not move 14 points against the position before we rallied right back up to this DSR level, trade the sideways channel. This is over 80 points right there in the S&P over about one week. And again, during that time, options desk is buying puts, covering and buying calls, covering and buying puts, covering and buying calls, covering and buying puts, and then depending on what we get here, adverse excursion or we're taken out. So right here, we go 4-0 and in the sideways, sell them here, and then out on stops. 4-1 and overall during that sideways trade. This massive DSR level still plotting here. We go to 1890s. The market rolls back over. The perfect oversold, lower high, bullish divergence. Oversold, lower high, bullish divergence. This is, always has been, always will be an SOS 5 buy signal. This is where we told you to buy them earlier in the week. Long entries rolled right back up. What does a turning point look like? Again, overbought, higher, low, bearish divergence. Look at the symmetry. Look at that easy to spot, double bottom, double top. At each one of the levels where we had directional change. So right here again, RSI, we're oversold, lower high, bullish divergence. We said buy the calls right here. Beautiful trade. We rallied back up. This horizontal line represents previous structure support, anticipated resistance. We paused and went sideways for an entire day. And then when we got through, Gone pecan, straight north. We go overbought, left side. Left side is the setup side. Write it down, make it a part of your daily mantra. We pull back. Look at the symmetry. One, two, three, four, five bars down. 
two, three, four, five bars up. It's a 10 bar pattern, 10 bars, overbought, higher low, bearish divergence, overbought, higher low, bearish divergence. Once we break structure, what happens next? Here's the impulse move right here. This swing high to this low makes a new structure low in price. Look at the progressions and the syntax, the order in which the events occur. We go from this swing high to a new structure low, lower close. That's the signal leg. After the double top, the 2618 trade says sell the 618 retracement right here. So we sell them at 1864s, add at 1865s, put stops above the double top highs, straight south. Over and over and over. Then we decline here. Market goes oversold on the left side. Again, this is the first test left side. If I'm aggressive, I buy them here. If not, I wait for the market to form a double bottom like you see right here. If I'm aggressive, I put half out here. If I'm conservative, I wait. As soon as we break below, close below, the level's given way. Now we'll look for the next level. Same thing over and over and over. Okay? It's structure analysis. We add the dynamic support and resistance levels to help quantify, to bring some structure to those levels. This way, I don't have to look left and try to identify or decide. We're removing the discretion, right? So here we are. We're on a 1,500 tick chart. So look what's happened in the S&P 500 so far today. Number one, we gapped lower. There's the previous session's close, 1829. Since the 8 or 8.30 a.m. open, we're pulling back down. So if I'm a go trader, a gap open trader, what do I have? I've got a DSR level, SOS1. RSI is oversold, SOS2. Look left, previous structure support, SOS3. Okay, But this is the left side of a potential double bottom. So if I want to get into the position, we buy half a position. And then I'd look for this market to rally. My protective stops must go below the current swing lows. So as soon as I put the position on, look left. Is the stop below the swing low? Yes, it is. Basically, I'm risking four to five points. I'm going to take partial profits at four to five. The balance is going to come up here to 90% of the gap fill. If the market breaks below the current swing lows and takes my stops out, then we'll look for a continuation sell signal. So the fact that the market is gapping lower allows me to add strength of signal to my long entry. In order for the market to fill the gap, we need it to rally. The market fills the gap better than 50% of the time when the gap open is less than 2% of the value of the instrument traded. Okay, so from the 830 open, where are we? 828. So it looks like we're going to open around 16. So we're 13 points below yesterday's close. Less than 1%. So there's the 1500 tick. What did yesterday start off like? Our option specialist bought puts in the S&P. Why? Markets banging around right up here. The Globex session. So we have beautiful symmetrical double tops from the prior session's close. We got a massive DSR resistance zone. Then we come in right here and we open. We gapped higher. As we rally back into this price point right there, we buy puts or sell the futures. The market rolls over and fills the gap. And then again, once they take out our DSR level right here at the 1858 handle, I bought them right here. I got stopped out. Now previous structure support is anticipated resistance. And now we go into a trend mode. And we see this nice directional push straight south. Never got back to the 1858s. We continue the sell-off right there. And that brings us into real time. Okay, so S&P 500. SOS 5 buy signal. Again, it's still more aggressive. This is the first test of the level. It's the second test right here, but it's the left side of a potential double bottom. So again, if you're more conservative, you're waiting. If you're aggressive, put out half the position. If we pop up, come back down, the right side comes in over here, we'd have another symmetrical double bottom. 
the DSR level is set based on that swing low on my higher time frame. That's a 6,000 tick chart. Previous structure support right here around the 25's anticipated resistance. So again, if we start to rally back to fill this gap, obviously I'd be looking for short signals right here on a fade the fill trade. Yeah, absolutely. And if the market just rolls over, gone pecan, you see the NASDAQ now, new lows on the NASDAQ. We just took out the overnight lows. All right, so crude oil right here, same thing. Got short crude right against these previous structure resistance zones right here, 103.50s. Okay, so sold crude right here as we filled the gap. We made higher highs. I put more out right here, and now I'm going to look for this to roll over to the 0311s. Let's tighten the chart up. Sideways trade in crude oil, the majority of the trade contained by 103.60 to 103.10s, a 50 cent range over the last session and a half, two sessions. So I want to be a buyer against support. Right now, because I'm short, I'm going to cover right here. If I get a signal, I'd reverse and go long against those lows. Yeah, real simple. So let's see if we can hold these down here, go possibly fill the gap in the S&P 500. Plenty of room to run. Let's go take a quick look here at our hourly chart on the uh, SPOOs. I'll do a little Fibonacci analysis. Look at this, gang. This is where the market spends the majority of its time. Again, not all the time, but 60% of the time the markets are in a non-trending channeling type mode. Even if they are trending in a bull capacity, we still have periods like this where we can pick up these beautiful sideways trades. So we'll pick up 60, 80, 100 points swing trading this sideways channel. Let the DSR levels quantify support and resistance and then follow your rules of engagement. This is with no indicators. If I came in here and simply added the internal strength indicator, the IS over that you've got right there in your package, double left click on it, leave the default settings right there and we'll look for cluster trades simply. Turning point, black tip, there's a two bar cluster sell. Turning point, black tip, a three bar cluster buy. Turning point, black tip at a DSR level. Right here. And then again, once we break above, close above, gone pecan, we go directional. Turning point, black tip. Right there. Now, look right here. Turning point, two, three, four, five, six bars later, the black tip. So again, this is not a two or three bar cluster. Too much price action took place between those two levels. Yeah, beautiful setups across the board. So let's go look. We'll tighten our chart down. <coughs> we'll do some Fibonacci analysis. This was the swing high right here that preceded the decline to this new structure low. From that new structure low, we rallied back to this lower high. <clears throat> I want to take that right there. We project the 127 at 1814. Have we hit 1814? Bada bing, bada beautiful. To the tick. Now, inside of this leg, we take the impulse move right here. The value of impulse, outside return lower high, 618 Fibonacci retracement. What if this guy duplicates itself again right here? That projects down to around 1805 quarters. There's a symmetrical one-to-one -one measured move right there. So now I've got two pieces of data. Number one, I've got a 1414 Fibonacci extension. Number two, I've got an ABCD or symmetrical measured move. Two different pieces of technical analysis projecting 1805. Now, where's the market right now relative to the projected highs or lows of the day? <clears throat> Let's go here. Come down. Let me see if I've got my rule of projection here. I do not. 80% of the time, 120% of the seven-day ATR contains price action the following day. We've been outside of those norms recently. 
you know, we've seen 150, 170% ATR moves, no problem. New lows right here. So I'd want to find out where's this market currently trading relative to its own average true range. Let's see here. So 411. So it looks like our highs of the session, including overnight, are 1832. Okay. Average true range in this market has now rallied to 25 points a day. So you simply take your 7-day ATR at 25 points. Rod, if you'll check that for me, please. Times 120%. 23, okay. So about a 30-point ATR. So we would anticipate from our 1832s an 1802 uh, or 1800 target. So that would be a reasonable expectation today. All right, so 1500 top left. Yeah, and some of you wanted to talk a little bit about um, HTF, TTF. So we'll take a look at the charts right here. On the left-hand side, we can look at HTF, higher time frame. One of my clients... Uh, emailed me and just trading two markets, higher time frame chart on the left side, trading time frame chart on the right side. Yeah, and he's just smoking it. Again, he's able to focus, a bit of a specialist, if you will, uh, two markets. That's it. And I absolutely love it. Yeah, pop in the markets that you're trading. I think we talked about crude and maybe the mini Russell. So there's some good directional movement in both of those guys. Yeah, so S&P top left, looking for the gap fill. We've got the aggressive go trade. We've broken the DSR levels down here. And then top right, 610 tick on the S&P 500 with my range trader. NASDAQ bottom left, 610 tick. And then crude oil over here, bottom right. Right. 